So this is my friend Eric. And Eric, if you want to just tell uh, your age and where you're from and if you do van life part-time or full-time. I'm here in San Diego, California. I am 36 and we are part-time in the van, but we rent the van out quite a bit. Um, anybody can take it out and then I'm about to take it out on a long trip coming up. And who do you travel with? My wife and my little one, Penny. And then I have a future, a couple future trips with some family members and some buddies um, out to Joshua Tree coming up too. What's the year and make of your van and the name of the van? Uh, it's a 2016 mid-roof transit um, that you'll see has been a little transformed and then the name is Griswold off of the uh, National Lampoon's family vacations. We just did an interview just a little earlier and that's been already posted so make sure you go watch that because there's a lot of information especially if you're curious about van life but you didn't come for that today you came for this <laughs> awesome van tour and you're not even ready for this in San Diego. I just saw Eric in his van and it stopped me in my tracks because it's <laughs> a two-story. I'm gonna go step-by-step step through this van because there's so much to see and then we'll get to the two-story part and you'll see all about it. So let's jump right into it. Let's do it. The way that it's set up right now, I usually just put these pillows here and I just kind of lounge in the back. Doing that a long time, your back starts to hurt. So um, I'm working on a process right now where we're gonna utilize this cutout and then we're gonna have a fold down tray that folds down, that'll turn into a little laptop system. And when I get back from the next trip, this little section right here is also getting modified. So we're gonna have basically like a marine style table that goes up and down. We like this extra space and I, it was created because of the potty for the most part, but we also want this to be a full bed. In the long, long run, ideally, I would love Flare Space in here. Flare Space is actually one of our sister companies. They have a process that's called Flares, where they're essentially taking the back of the vehicle and they're putting these flares that push it out so that you can seep sideways in them. So it doesn't seem like a huge deal until you kind of see how much more space. You see how these are kind of pushed into here. These would give another, I believe it's 16 inches. If you have a forward facing bed, it pushes more into your living area, your kitchen area. Being able to sleep sideways, especially if you have a dual rack, is super helpful, especially for taller people. So we needed extra seating in this area. This had always been here. Over in this area, there was a whole kitchen area where the induction stove was permanent. We opted to just get rid of that storage. We felt like this was enough and with the box on top is more than enough for us. And then this was the key to everything because we wouldn't be able to have a van if we can't take our daughter. And my wife was very, very um, certain that we needed DOT approved style seating that could bolt down. I almost did this on my own, but I did not. I used my sensibility and I went to Vamanos Vans here in San Diego. Ben and Hannah, they did the install on this and it's it's awesome. That one goes down and I pull this one, goes up. And now, as you can see, this is the mode that when I'm using it, this is the mode that I keep it in. Now I have a ton of room in here. Um, what's really nice about this is we measured this out for pack and play as well. So if you have a family that has a little one, two car seats, one can be rear facing, one can be forward facing. When this goes up, now you have room for a pack and play. Kiddo can sleep here up top. Mom and dad can go up top. So it opens up everything. And this is our main game area, hangout area. We use the Verizon hotspot for Wi-Fi, which has been perfect. I know a lot of people are looking into Starlink and into kind of nomad internet solutions. If you are going to be around a city for the most part or any type of urban environment, just get a hotspot or get two hotspots from two different companies that are not your cell carrier. And then you can use which one is better. Uh, internet is, is like I'm at home. For more van tours and interviews, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. Throw a like on this video and keep watching till the end to see Eric's two-story pop top. Storage on this one, we wanted it pretty hidden for the most part, minus the, we've got a giant Yakima box on top. This is where we'll put a lot of our excess camping gear or the things we're not using on the daily, um, blow up stand-up paddle boards, things like that will go up in there. So we built this kind of modular to house a bunch of these. So this is our main inside storage for extra gear that we're going to bring. Down in the small garage area here, this is where we'll keep a lot of our blankets and towels. Back in here, uh, we bring an extra camp stove with us. We have cargo netting all around the van in a bunch of different places. 
And these are for just basically anything storage wise. And then we were thinking about how to store these and we really, really simple. We literally just bungeed it. On the back of transits, you have all these little areas where you can just hook stuff. Any type of magnetic hooks of any variety, they're actually extremely helpful. You can just move stuff. So this is our stinky bag. If you guys have never heard of this company, it's basically a bag that you can throw any dirty clothes into and you can't smell it. So it's got this antimicrobial inside to it and you just throw it in the wash, throw the whole thing in there and it's really good, but you can see I can move it around depending on what we have, what we're throwing in there. And then our main everyday storage. So I keep some of the dishware in here and some other things and you'll see we've got uh we've got little i call them easter eggs you'll see them all over the van from the movie so this is part of it and then this is our larger storage one um, and this changes depending on what we're doing where we're going right now it's pretty much just set up for me and then at the bottom we also have a safe as well so that's installed and that's bolted down to the chassis of the van that's very very helpful that way you don't have to lug a bunch of stuff when you're on hikes we just shove everything in there the whole goal is to be off grid anyways i also love that you have a mirror we picked up the van originally we're like oh we don't know if we'll keep this entire area but this has actually been incredibly helpful we're really happy with just this entire setup up in the front here I've kind of created, uh, this continually always falls out and hits me in the head. So you'll see a lot of Velcro things all over. This is kind of our random. So we'll throw maps up here, throw my sunglasses. Honestly, the kiddo throws a lot of her stuff up here when she's not using it. So she'll just launch a bottle up there or whatever she's not using. This is just like a little quick storage area. It's really nice, actually, these ones you can grab from sitting down. So if I need to put on my sunglasses, I can just grab them really quick. It's actually quite nice. We just have this kind of reflecting foam here, and this is just felt here. It's just glued on there. We just have them cut for every single window size, and we just did these small Velcro pieces. You can see these are cut out for the front two windows. I've got a really large one here for the side sliding door. And then the only one we don't cover is the small slider here. That's pretty much always open for airflow. These came with the band. They were custom made from the former owner. I'm gonna take these same exact ones and I'm basically gonna put another layer of insulation. And then we have some fabric. I'm gonna put the fabric over the top of those. And then I'm gonna put magnets so that they just stick onto here. And that's the, the giant front one up there. Um, that's the only one that I use for the front and then all of the windows have been tinted. And it's actually quite hard to see in here, especially at nighttime. Even without these, it's you really can't see very deep in here. All of the water side is hidden under here. Current setup right now, so this is a 10 gallon fresh water tank. All of these pumps are essentially just going up to the front there to our main cleaning area. And then if you see, we have some extra room here. So I have my shore power plug in in this van. This is about to get doubled in space. Do a hole through here and have a double one, um, unless I can just find one of the 20 gallon ones for sale. And then all of that will route back up to here. This is cutting board slash, this is what our cooktop is. You see the setup here. And then we just have a deep well sink here. We do not use it for drinking water. This is mainly for dishwashing and us washing. And then we'll usually bring water with. Fill up for this one particularly, I have a shell station that's right by me. That's where I get my gas. They give me the code and they have the, the little water tank. And I literally just use that water for the most part. If I'm near somebody that has the garden hose, um, I can fill it up that way. And I'll show you where the spout is. Fill up's right here, special key that just goes into it. Here and here, give it a little turn. And you basically know when you're full is when it starts pouring out of here. All of the gray water goes to a holding tank that is 10 gallon holding tank. And then the pool cord or the pool. Oh, yeah. So gray water right here. This is where it pulls out from there. It's actually really easy. I just emptied it out. So nothing down in there right now. We have everything organized in these little basket type of things. A, yeah, they're kind of cute for the rental side, but they're actually really helpful to have all of your basic cooking stuff in here. We only keep a couple of pots and pans. You can get lazy if you have a bunch of them sitting around and you don't wash them and then they kind of build up. It's not great in a camper van. One way that we cook is with our induction cooktop. This will plug into our 12 volt and then I'll just use my two stainless steel bottoms on there. If we don't end up doing it in this way, we'll cook outside. We basically use this when we've got a lot of power or if we've got shore power, so when I won't use this one tonight, I'll use the gas stove. And I usually just cook outside. If it's inside, I have the pop top up, windows open, getting a lot of circulation. Food storage for a lot of the dry stuff we'll put in here. Or you can see, we usually keep our snacks like 
quick grab snacks in this one. Snacks. The, the kiddos sitting right here and being able to access those really quickly before a meltdown happens. And then we have an isotherm fridge here. I actually really like this fridge. It's been working really well. It stores more than enough. It's got a nice freezer to it. If I were to change this, and this is kind of a big thing, I would have this on the outside here. Where it's in here, if you're trying to open it from the outside, you kind of have to reach around strangely. And there's just this weird spacing. So at some point, I am probably going to move this to the outside. And then I have a fan system on the back here. This is running constantly. So that is basically to push all of the hot air out of this component to help this run more efficiently. This is not an expensive thing to add on there and I would highly recommend it. Um, I'm in the process right now of adding one down here as well for the battery storage, pushing a lot of that hot air out. Everybody's favorite potty time. For us in general, we were kind of anti having a toilet in the van. Uh, we may still not have this in here. We're still figuring that out. It has been nice with a kiddo. I'll be honest, it is very nice if everybody's sleeping up here and it's three in the morning and it's that time of the night and you don't want to get out of the van. It has been really nice for that. I won't lie. I have this little storage area here. So this is like an accordion style with these two brackets here and it folds up. And there she is. We have the Thetford in here. Uh, just a simple port of, yeah, they're everywhere. They're super fun. These are really nice. This is a five and a half gallon. I believe I would like to do a two and a half gallon. When you go to change this or when you go to empty it, if it's full, it's pretty heavy. And also I don't really want that much waste sitting in the van, but it's kind of out of sight, out of mind. That is one part of this setup that we really like. We're just losing, if you can see where this is. We just have a lot more space in here right now that we would like to utilize. The cassette style of this one that comes off the bottom here, it's basically just storing it and then there's a hose that you pull out and you literally just dump it. So if I can find a lot of the public restrooms by beaches or like San Diego, we have a lot of them that has the shower and that in there. What I'll do is I'll empty it. I'll go to the shower, spray a lot of water in there and some soap, empty it again water soap empty it again and then it's pretty much clean and then i febreze it all the time so febreze is my best like this whole van smells like febreze we don't have at this time the secondary shower out of the back although it is probably something we're going to do that we have the rotating one like this and then there's a small switch right here and you can see we get pretty good water pressure with it so we can actually do showers, quick wash downs, uh, the dog. This is really good for the dog. Four to five days, you're perfectly fine with baby wipes in the most part. If you're going to the gym, if you're trying to get a workout in, their showers are more comfortable. Again, here in San Diego, we have a lot of the beach style showers too, or they're just everywhere. You can kind of get a free shower and pop in and out. We either have a lot of extra clothes and then we'll put a bunch of the stuff in the stinky bag. But laundry mats is a lot of them and or just like your old school just have a plastic tub, take one little pod, you put it in there, you let it sit out. You can let it sit out in the sun. I know that sounds kind of strange, but that kind of the heat coming from the sun, it will melt those a lot quicker. It gives it like a hot wash, if you will. And then you can just kind of hang dry it um, on the inside of the door here. Um, you'll see some other of these hangers here, and then a lot of these little ones. Um, you can kind of hang stuff there, dry it out, blankets, things like that. Here in Southern California, cold is not really cold. So this van is pretty much set up well now. Um, we do have quite a bit of rumple blankets. Uh, I think we have four, so that are extremely warm. If you have not had a rumple blanket before, I cannot recommend it more. It? Yeah, these are the best. Think of it kind of like a really thin sleeping bag. So they're really thin, and then you can also use it as a poncho. And essentially what it is, it's a very light way, keeping extremely warm. Several of these does really, really well. There's a whole like national parks version of these. There's a lot of different artists that they get with. You can do custom ones. So if you want your own company one, they'll make your own company one. So yeah, very, very cool. Not with my family, but I want to do some more off-grid, really cold stuff. So I'm looking at a few diesel heaters that come in like a tool case. So they're, they're modular, you can take them on and off. I'm actually talking with Colorado Camper Vans about how to insulate the pop top itself. And all these walls have lock wool. These are really well insulated. Up here, not as much. 
there's no fan, there's no AC, um, there's nothing in here. It's an open concept van. So the way we stay cool is we literally leave it open. And then when we pop the pop top up, you'll see how large it is and how much air flows through there. If I'm trying to do more stealth style, it's a little harder in this van. Obviously just by the look of it, it's not a great stealth looking van anyway. To wherever we're going, as soon as we get there, like this whole thing's open. I mean, we get extremely good airflow in here. I may add um, one of the max air fans to the top here to pull some of that hot air that's coming through. Um, but so far, I, we haven't had a need, even in the middle of summer, sleeping up here is extremely comfortable. Lighting system inside for both of them is super simple. So we've got some puck lighting that's on the back here. One switch turns those on, and then we have the dimmer. And then on the pop top side here, um, same thing, we have pop lighting that's in there. We have a couple like of the LED pull-out rechargeable lanterns that we'll set up kind of outside. But for the most part, we have, like everybody has a headlamp. So this is very uh, recently updated. Modular pull-off. I had two 120 amp batteries in here that were the hybrid gel. Um, we were having some issues with them staying charged for a while. Um, I just switched over to these Battleborn batteries. And if you look anywhere on the internet or talk about Battleborn, they're awesome. Their products are incredible. Literally the instant that we had this hooked up, um, my van was already charging way, way faster and it was holding charge way better. So very, very happy about these. Uh, these are 100 amp hours a piece. We have our Ames power inverter. Um, this one is basically our inverter for all of our outlets. And then this is also for shore power. Uh, this is a 3000 watt. Our MPPT, you see it's in bulk charge right now. That's for the solar. And then the DC to DC is a work in progress. Um, it's actually charging too fast right now since we did the switch over and it's been getting really, really warm. And you can see it's all running through our closet here. So different switches and breakers. And then all of this is going into these two ports which will then come around to the Symarine and then where we turn on the inverter on the back side. Turn the inverter on. If they're doing shore power, then they just click up. Um, this is the current storage in the battery right now. So you can see on the volts right now, um, we're really low on the voltage side. Not a lot of sun coming in today. And without the DC to DC alternate charger, it's not really doing a whole lot right now. So once I get on the road today, this will be charged in about an hour or so. And that will hold me usually around seven to eight days or so. I don't use a lot of power when I'm on the road. And then down here, we have a secondary one that's just reading the voltage on. These are one spot where I have outlets, your more traditional outlets. We've got a 12 volt here, two USBs here, and then I have my other 12 volts here. This is just our hotspot Wi-Fi. And we just keep it close to here, that way I can plug it in and keep it charged. Our daughter, she has her iPad, which is kind of a uh, mom and dad saving grace sometimes. When we are out on the road, we try to not really use technology a whole bunch. Um, we'll use our phones, we'll watch little movies. Um, we'll have like a movie night up in the pop top with usually either a laptop and or the iPad. No TV in here and probably never going to have one in here. We have a lot of books in here. We, we like to read when we're on the road. So we play a lot of board games. National Park has a really cool board game. Banana Grams, just fun stuff like that. More, uh, more camping style. I thought at first I would hate this big closet here. Picks up a lot of real estate in the van, but I absolutely love this. One big full stand-up closet versus this entire area being full of different shelving or different options or cabinet options it opens it up a lot more. So if you've ever been in a van that has a lot of those in the back, sometimes you feel a little more claustrophobic or you hit your head a lot. So I actually really like this as a replacement for those. And then the pop top is the, the king of everything. It's allowed us to have a short wheelbase van that can park anywhere, I can take it anywhere, but then have kind of a luxurious spot to sleep in um, that is kind of ridiculously comfortable. <laughs> And let's get to that because I yeah. know that's the, the star of the show. So how do you even get to that? <laughs> They made it really, really simple, uh, which is awesome for us and for renters. So it's got two safety latches here that we pull down. And then it's just got an electric switch. And I always tell people when they're, when they're starting to put it up to grab a beer, a margarita, you know, grab a drink. The total time that it takes to go to the top, I believe, is about 45 seconds or so. If you look on it there, there's two motors that are pushing this big boy up and... They are slow because the pop top in itself is very, very sturdy and it just takes some time.
the van sits at 10 feet, four inches when it's kind of in its low mode. And then when the pop top, I believe we measured it out to 14.5. Do a giant snow angel. <laughs> snow angel. So it's a lot of space up there. My wife and I will come up here and our daughter. So we can fit three up here, two adults very, very comfortably. We've had a bunch of kiddos playing around up here. We've had like five at one time that just created like a little play area um, and they were all super comfortable. They can nap up here. Every one of these is separate. I believe they said the weight capacity per every single one of these is like 200 pounds per. And there's four back here so quite a bit if we wanted this whole area to just be wide open and we don't want to use it as a bed these all fold up back here completely modular as well see so if you got three different levels so you've got this one this one this one there it is so you can go all the way open too and who did this one for you uh colorado camper vans and they got their logo right there huge shout out to them they are awesome. Highly, highly, highly recommend this product. Um, and if you look at the, the top here, um, they have their kind of logo put in here. All the puck lights are very sturdy. And then like the entire actuating system, um, the bars that it's on are extremely sturdy. So getting down, I can hold on to any one of these bars and it's very, very, very sturdy. Um, what was the process of getting this done on a van and the cost? When I picked up the van already, this was done by the former owner, but I would contact Colorado Camper Van specifically and they do the install at their facility so they can cut the roof off and then they'll put on the type of model that goes with your van specifically. I believe, if I remember right, it's twelve to 14000 for this site up well worth the cost of this type of setup for sure downstairs mm -hmm. uh, on the second level or actually <laughs> it would be the first level with your modular seating area mm -hmm. how can you fit one person or two with the setup right now you can do um, two small kids or small adults that are going lengthwise and then when we get that other piece in the middle you'll be able to go sideways till about probably five, nine, five, ten or so in length that way. So this is one of the most unique camper vans I've ever seen or been in. So thank you for sharing it, not only with me, but with a snack pack. And thank you, Eric, for just showing us your home. And it's just been awesome. I love this industry. I love this. I love helping out. And how can they reach you? Eric at gocamprentals.com. And just Shoot me an email, say, hey, I want to chat about all things camper vans, and I'll hit you back. If you're curious about renting a van, or if you if you have a van that you'd like to maybe earn some extra income off of, Eric's your man, and you can <laughs> contact him. See you guys on the next one. Bye. Bye. For more tours and interviews, make sure... <laughs> my butt's too big. <laughs> oh, no, what I do with my keys? Uh oh tours make sure to hit that subscribe blah, 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 blah. your window coverings oh, are no. rolling away <laughs> get back here oh yeah okay? yeah oh we're filming <laughs> but yeah i think people always are interested <laughs> i bet you get that all the time yeah for more interviews and van tours make sure you why yeah and if you're curious about renting uh can you drive with the pop top up? Ah, uh, no. <laughs> that would be that'd be bad for everybody. That'd be a bad idea. Um, one second. Vans being vans.